So now my attention is turned towards the replacement of the screw and knot here. Uh, <clears throat> the original screw was of a rounded threaded form, really not trapezoidal or acne form, but um, a little bit, um, I think it is to improve accuracy. Anyway, it was worn. Well, the new one, uh, new replacement parts, obtained directly from Colchester actually. That is a regular acne or trapezoidal form screw. And uh, see the nut, one of the nuts that came with this is uh, tight, while the other nut, the old one, even worn, sits or won't enter, as you can see, so it's a different form. Uh, the reason for this exchange was, of course, that uh, both these older used uh, knots were quite uh, worn, one more than the other, really. But anyway, beyond uh, uh, the second one there, really beyond normal use, or at least ripe for replacement. And these pair of knots form as a backlash uh, compensation adjustment and with splines they are, this screw is then mounted to, might be a little bit tricky to see but there is a slot where we have some triangular shaped uh, one on each um, pair of let's say gibbs and then with the mounted piece in between there press down you can adjust the backlash to force these two knots apart. And then there is a locating pin um, in the hole there on the one side that uh, needs to be fitted after you have fitted the whole assembly because of the change that may have been introduced with the scraping and everything so that you locate it precisely. And this is my setup for testing, uh, really, the in and out movement, that it is uh, perpendicular to the bed. I'll try to, say, mimic the bed here. It doesn't no, no longer need to be flat to the plate, but just so that it represents, even though it is a little bit worn on, on, the, on the side, a sort of um, bed-like structure. So I can locate the V-way there. And now we're just running an indicator. I've already tried, proven to be within uh, 100, 200 of a millimeter, which with this rough setup is kind of okay. The underside of the saddle will need to be scraped to a ground bed anyway, so one, two hundred of a millimeter out was in the right direction also. Uh, I think it's not too shabby. I used whale oil and applied it liberally. I mean, it's not very critical. Use the same on the screw. And the thrust bearing in the rear here, a pair of uh, normal ball bearings. At this stage, you may run into some alignment problems, so either you have to shim off the knots there on the top. Uh, you have to rearrange the screw position up and down to avoid this to bind. And also the, the rear there, the alignment holes, or the, you know, reposition the holes also in the front. And uh, then you have the gearing towards the saddle there for an automatic cross feed. But luckily, in the end, this did not become a problem. So I didn't have to do anything. And then we have the gib, the gib, um, just oiling the gib first and then insert it into the part and then I have the screw or the screws in front and rear and uh, while at it of course we can then do the, the front assembly with um, the hand crank, uh, the locating pinster as I said and plus the two retaining screws. Uh, this hole was, I, I cut down the video time here because it uh, was a lot of back and forth. <laughs> uh, it's not as easy as just 
plane sailing all the time, so um, I mean, dropping screws, uh, oily hands, uh, glasses, not finding the, the holes, you name it, every kind of small irritating problem turns up in these uh, situations. And just snug enough to, to function. And the backlash uh, is adjusted and then just uh, measured with the test indicator there. I move the slide, uh, slide back and forth and in the incrementally then snug it up. Uh, I mean with forcing these two knots apart. So just uh, moving the slide a little bit, tightening and then moving in until I get desired backlash. And it's an iterative process, so you repeat it until you're satisfied. Of course, you have to have this smooth operation of the handwheel also. I think I got down to five hundredths of a millimeter, and then anything beyond uh, that, I mean, I went almost to two, and then it was too tight, so two to five hundredths of a millimeter that I consider okay, between there somewhere. And partly responsible for the um, error at first was only the, I mean, I had to tighten the, the double thrust bearing at the rear. So handwheel is smooth, operation is nice, four to five hundreds backlash. And then you of course have to measure the sideways movement. I mean, uh, I did here show it at the middle, but I tried it also at the extremes to see the sideways movement. I mean, this, the slop in the in, or play in the gib is also then down to two to five hundredths of a millimeter. And then this last test where we set up uh, to test the, f the facing um, uh, qualities of the lathe. The shell really face a little bit uh, hollow. Uh, I can never remember whether this is concave or con convex, but anyway, I say hollow. And uh, <coughs> this is just a very rough test uh, because we don't have the bed here. So this uh, wrong cylinder, this round cylinder, will then mimic the bed. And I just uh, hold this steady and um, square there while I not the angle I mean, while I uh, rotate the handwheel and then move the slides up and down. And as I said, I got it to within one, two, two hundredths of a millimeter and uh, in the right direction, so it faces hollow. And uh, to that, with the worn on the side of the wee way to this round cylinder, I think uh, this is at least acceptable. So um, this concludes really the test and uh, the partial restoration of the cross slide and saddle for this Colchester Master 2005, at least a Colchester. A very nice lathe, quality piece of equipment. I really enjoyed this. I hope you did too and hope we all can learn a little bit from this. So thank you for now.